Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Salty Socks. Sean, this is an emergency broadcast. <laughs> We're coming to you one week from the trailer drop for episode 9 for another trailer drop. This one came out of left field off the sandy pits of Crate. Sean, what are we watching today? Today, as you informed me about uh, probably two hours ago or an hour ago, whenever this happened, a full trailer for The Mandalorian dropped, which we were just talking on the live stream last week about how The Mandalorian was coming on November 12th when Disney Plus launches, and we thought, well, we don't really know much about this. We don't know much about the story, and here they come with a trailer for us. I have not watched it except for the first little bit as I've had some technical difficulties. You have not watched any of it, so I'm very excited to see what they tell us in this trailer. Yeah, um, I'm ready to go, so without further ado, should we hit play? Let's hit play on three. One, two, three. Do oh, backs. I think. Maybe not. It was really too fast. I'm missing all the dialogue. Sorry. Except I memorized that part. It's a shame that your people suffered. Ooh. Little vibro blade. But bounty hunting is a complicated profession. We've seen that before. Ooh, smooth. They said you were the best in the Parsec. Would you agree? Oh, well, that armor is blaster proof. That was one of those things. Whoa. Is that a TIE fighter? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Oh, he does talk. He speaks. First time we've heard his voice. That was pretty sweet. Hold on, hold on. What? Did he use some sort of wrist grapple thing to grapple back onto a TIE fighter? That's what it looked like. Was he using a jetpack? Let me just go back to that scene real fast. That was crazy. Huh. Oof. What did it, what it did looked you... like he was already connected to the TIE fighter and then zipped up. Interesting. Wow. What did you, th uh, overall impressions, what did you think of that? Um, gosh, I wish I knew what the show was about, because it looks really good. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, uh, uh, through a lot of that trailer, I kept thinking to myself, we've already seen this, we've seen this, we've seen this. There was a lot of reused footage. Right. I still don't feel like they gave us a good sense of what this is going to be about. But, once again, as with the previous footage we've seen, I think everything looks really cool. Like, okay, yeah, this it, looks awesome. It looks like very cool shots of things. It looks like very cool um, moments. Um, did you see some super battle droids in the background there? I did not catch that, but I feel like, obviously, let's uh, maybe go through this and see. It's only a minute and 43 seconds. Okay. Let's do it. And see if we can catch anything. So when we start, I'm going to click through this, and I'll tell you when I stop kind of okay. what, what I'm seeing so you can follow along. So we start, and obviously we see the Stormtrooper helmets we saw last time. But let's listen to the dialogue. Is the world more peaceful since the revolution? Is the world more peaceful since the revolution? So, he's so this is... This is post, uh, just for everyone out there, this is post second Death Star blowing up. 
Yeah, post like six years after Return of the Jedi. Right, right, right. So I'm assuming that old guy, whoever his character is, is talking to our main character, the Mandalorian. Um, I at first thought these were dewbacks that are riding the, uh, along the cliff. I don't think they are anymore because they're moving much too fast than what we saw in A New Hope. And I feel like we saw either con like a still photo or there was footage in one of the last ones of like a smaller type dewback creature. Yeah, yeah. It must be one of the. Part. It must be one of those things. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, let's pause there. It's a shame that your people suffered. He's talking about the Mandalorian people, I would assume. Yeah, so we get a little bit of Mandalore in the Clone Wars animated series, but we don't see it at all in the live action movie, so... Yeah, all we see is Boba Fett, so I don't know... Um, this will be really interesting to see what happens, because I feel like the Clone Wars kind of... Uh... From what I understand, well, I guess they are in Rebels. Well, are they in Rebels? Uh, I can't remember. You're the one watching Rebels right now. Are they in Rebels? Well, that Sabine girl is a Mandalorian, and I know, I think they yeah. do go back to her. Well, I don't know. They go back to her family at some point, but I haven't finished all of Rebels. I'm trying to for I for you, the, the fans. Suffered during the uh, revolution. That's interesting. Yeah. Then we see him obviously take out these. Uh, could they be other bounty hunters that look like Trandoshans? But bounty hunting is a complicated profession. Yeah, it looks like it. it. looks like he also has a stun or a taser at the end of his weapon. Yeah, I mean, it reminds me of those vibroblades from uh -huh. Knights of the Old Republic. But All right, so then we see his ship coming in and flying across this forested planet, which we've seen before. Well, I mean, sorry, I don't know how far along you are. I just got to the carbonite freezing. Looks like there's several people in carbonite there. Oh, yeah, so I can go back. Right, and we, we saw that in the previous footage. Uh-huh, yeah. Okay, I'm at the Lucasfilm logo. We see the ship flying. Just as a note, someone did a breakdown of the ship, and it is looks to be in the Rise of Skywalker scene with all the ships. Cool. So the Mandalorian ship is part of the Armada or whatever we're calling it. Sorry, I'm playing again. See the ship, Carbonite guy comes out. And look, if you look to the side, there are actually three more floating to the left of the ship. While he's bringing, while someone's bringing one down, it's not him, is it? Doesn't look like him. I don't think so. Yeah. Or he might be up in the ship still. Anyway. Um, all right. They said you were coming. They said you were coming. They said you were the best in the Parsec. Would you agree? Okay, so it's really interesting. Um, you know, this is the, the Empire is supposedly... From what I understand, the Empire should be gone by now. After, uh, after Return of the Jedi, there was an operation called Operation Cinder, which was the Emperor's plan to destroy the Empire because it was not because he had died. It was no longer worthy to be um, his Empire. And through some books and including Battlefront Two game. Um, the Empire was destroyed. The books were called Aftermath. Um, the final battle of Jakku is where the Empire made its last kind of a suicide. Um, Self-implosion, self-destruction. Um, so it's really interesting that even after those books, we, we kind of saw a little bit of what looked to be Imperial officers in the first look at D23, but it looks like these Stormtroopers are still alive and well and doing something. Yeah, so I'll be curious to see if they're kind of like mercenaries or if what seems most likely to me is that the Empire has now broken down into smaller cells 
that maybe, you know, the grand moths or the moths or the local governors or something of the empire have taken the their garrisons or their legions and basically become roving warlords on the planets that they're on. Yeah. Um, with their own agendas without, you know, I don't know if they're loyal to the Empire or if they just have the armor and things like that, and so they're just loyal to themselves at this point, but they're like a, a force still. And I, um, the news was released today from, I think, Entertainment Weekly, that there is, in the first episode of The Mandalorian, that there is a massive leak about what the... A massive leak about the state of the galaxy. A spoiler. And all they've said... Disney Plus is not usually what happens is they let um, reporters and other me members of the media, they get a few episodes before either a season is put on air or released to live to streaming services. Disney Plus is not doing that with The Mandalorian, so no one has seen, I mean, other than a few um, promotional things that they're showing to reporters, they're not getting full, full episodes out, so they're trying to keep it under wraps. It'll be really interesting to see I think it might have something to do with this empire, the stormtroopers, um, what the state of the galaxy is currently. But that's just my thoughts. Yeah, and don't we already know, too, that this is all happening in the Outer Rim? Right. So if you think about at the end of Return of the Jedi, if Luke and Leia and Han all try to go set up the New Republic, it's going to be difficult still. Even the Empire had some difficulty kind of monitoring the outer rim. And so if I was, you know, outcast Imperial officers or soldiers or stormtroopers, I would also be hiding in the outer rim there where they can probably have more influence than if they went somewhere else. And maybe this is a staging ground for them to go off into the unknown regions where Pal Emperor Palpatine has perhaps given a rendezvous point for them to hide under an iceberg in a Star Destroyer for... <laughs> For 40 years until it rises from the ice. <laughs> you thought hot was cold. That's right. Okay, I'm going to push play. Let's keep going. Stormtroopers are no match for the Mandalorian. As they are no match for just about everyone. Okay, that's where you... That, that, right, there, that right there was the uh, super battle droids. Did you see him? Ship flies overhead in smoke. Little girl reaches out her hand. Battle droids right behind him. Yeah. You see that? They look like super battle droids. Maybe a little bit of a variation. But yes, they definitely look like super battle droids from the prequels. So uh, what's up with that? I also liked when he, the Mandalorian first comes out of that uh, door, his armor's like blaster proof. Like he gets shot in the shoulder, it just bounces right off. It deflects right off the armor. So I'll be curious to see if the if the Mandalorian is he like altruistic and like helping these innocent civilians, or is he like? I wonder what. I wonder how. Is he an anti-hero or is yeah. he a hero? I wonder how kind of morally ambiguous he's going to be. All right, I'm going to keep going after the droids. Okay, stop right there. So. That big rhino thing, when I first we first watched this, I thought it was the same creature from the prequels from Episodes 2, and now seeing it, I realize, no, it's not, because it doesn't have the horns coming out of the jawbone. So I don't know that what that is. Cool, though. Yeah, pretty cool. Spared no expense on this TV show, it looks like. Right. I think they said the budget was akin to the last season of Game of Thrones. I could be wrong on that. I could have my numbers wrong, but... I've heard that it was Game of Thrones-esque, the budget, for sure. And I'm not yeah. mad at it. All right, I'm going to keep going. Is that a Nabu Starfighter? Chasing the his Sorry. ship? Yeah, it looked kind of yellow. Let me scroll back. Sorry. That's a Nabu Starfighter. I don't know. Hold on. That's a Nabu Starfighter fight. No. I'll put money on that. No. Because look, when it comes back around, look at the back of it. 
as the tr scene transitions. I can't pause it. You're going to have to pause it there. It looks yellow. And two pods in the front. I don't think it is. Because the back... And skinny. I don't know. I'm looking at as maybe a good of pictures we're going to get on this. And the back does not look like the afterburners are the circle jet engines. Ugh. It looks different. Dang. I love that ship so much. The N1 Starfighter classic. Well, maybe it is, though. That'd be kind of crazy if we get to go back to some planets like Naboo or something like that. Yeah, that'd be totally unexpected. All right. Okay, I've got Carl Weathers. There he is. Apollo Creed. It definitely, I paused it after the uh, Bounty Hunter droid does this cool little thing. It definitely looks like this family he has something with. He has like either a life debt to or he's trying to save them. It looks like a lot of the characters are of the same family, in my opinion, or the same um, race of people from yeah. the same planet. Yeah. So is this, this droid is, uh, is his friend or his uh, partner or what? I don't know. Is it another bounty hunter, or is he working for the Imperials? Because it doesn't look... I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't look like he's shooting stormtroopers right here. All I know is he is not IG-88, and it is played by... Uh, Waiki, uh What's his name? From the director of Thor, Ragnarok. Like Ta Taika Watiti or whatever. Yeah. He's directing one of the episodes, but... But it, if you look him, he is shooting a bunch of people, and they are not stormtroopers. Yeah, that's true. So I'm curious to see how he fits in. And then, yeah, Homegirl almost takes off his helmet, or is uh -huh. reaching to take off his helmet. Then we see some of these secondary characters, too, that he's, like, friends with. The... And that one bald dude has some cool over-the-shoulder blaster gun happening. Yeah, sweet. Okay, now we get to this TIE fighter scene. Where, yeah, he's already attached to it, and he obviously re um, is able to retract the line and get up onto the roof where That's Giancarlo cool. Esposito is piloting a TIE fighter. Yeah, good. Well, don't know what to tell you. Hey, there's some really cool stuff in there. I'm intrigued. I'm obviously going to watch it. But <laughs> I guess what I'll say is if the purpose of a trailer is to get people excited for a show. It does I, it for me. What? It does that for me. It does it for me as well. But I'll also say I was already excited and I was going to watch This could have been the worst trailer on the planet. I'm st I was still going to watch The Mandalorian. So uh -huh. I'm curious uh, to see what other people think. If you weren't already planning to purchase Disney Plus or you weren't super excited about The Mandalorian, does this trailer get you excited for this show? Does it leave you a little bit wanting some more information? I think it's a... It's uh, full of cool shots and cool moments that I'm, I can't wait to see how it ties into the story. Because ultimately, I think you and I would both agree that um, it can have some really cool stuff in it. But if they don't deliver on the actual story, uh, it's going to fall flat. So, But I'm, I'm I pretty... It's only, it's only two weeks from Tuesday. Yeah. I'm pretty confident that this is going to be good. I, I'm going to be very surprised if this show flops. I'll be very surprised. Yeah. They are putting a lot of money into this. This is the tent pole of Disney Plus. You know, you have to think. Not only does Disney Plus hang in the balance, I don't feel. I mean, I don't feel like if the Mandalorian uh, does poorly, oh. Disney Plus will fail. But I am saying they're putting a lot of money into this. But also, casting Andor and Obi Wan, you don't want to give people bad taste in their mouth when there's two other series that you're. In production with. I think that Cassian Andor is more going to be affected by this. 
this could be the worst show ever, and Obi Wan's going to be successful. People are going to love that show, or at least be excited for it. That's a good point. Yeah. But yeah, I agree with you. I think that this is supposed to be a, a major um, selling point for Disney Plus, and uh, I'm excited for it. We're only a couple weeks away. Um. Anyway, yeah. Any other thoughts on this trailer for you, Joseph? That's, that's all for me. I'm gonna have to watch it a few more times. Um. Compared to Rise of Skywalker, Rise of Skywalker has me more excited. Let's just be honest here. But Mandalorian still looks fantastic. I will awesome. be happy, happy to wet my app, Star Wars appetite on the Mandalorian for a few weeks until our uh, Little Rock Rise of Skywalker Salty Socks viewing spectacular of 2019. I just want to throw in a couple more things while I have everyone's attention. Two, There's two more things coming out that have me excited is three days after the Mandalorian comes the video game Jedi Fallen Order, which follows um, Cal and his droid as they, this is before episode four, so it'll be interesting. And then just today it was released that Wedge Antilles is making his reappearance in a novel tie-in to The Rise of Skywalker, which makes me there's actually a, an image of him on the cover of the book um where it looks like could he possibly also be in rise of skywalker question mark yeah when we saw that image is that just the book cover or did we see some sort of poster for the movie like an international poster with him on it no it was an international book cover that uh. was released i think in error and someone picked it up but then they did release the English version of the book cover today officially. Because and it was confirmed that it is Wedge Antilles. Because the book cover looks kind of like a movie poster in that it has the actual actors and actresses on the cover and it looks like it's not drawings, it's actual photographs. Let's see if I can pull it up real fast. Maybe I can't. Anyway, yeah, so I mean, why would you get Wedge? the actor who played Wedge, um, and get a photograph of him <laughs> like that, exactly. for that for that book cover and he's if he's not in Rise of Skywalker. The book is called Resistance Reborn. Here's the photo, and there is Wedge right behind Poe there. Oh, a little bit. You got to hold it a little bit up because the trailer's in the way. Tell me where to show yeah, it. Yeah, right there. That's perfect. There he so is. That's sweet. <clears throat> I love it. Cool. I always thought he he wasn't a fan of Star Wars after his time. The actor wasn't a fan of it, so it's a. Uh, Good to see him back. And the actor, I think you know this, the actor is actually Ewan McGregor's uncle in real life. What? I yes. did not know that. That is the crazy tie-in, is that that wow. actor is at literally <laughs> Ewan McGregor's uncle. That's cool. So, uh, a little well, piece of other, trivia for you. Other things to look forward to, I guess. Anyway, I think that's enough for this episode, Sean. In the meantime, before we hit him again with some Mandalorian reaction or some uh, uh, Jedi Fallen Order reaction, what should our viewers do in the meantime? You should first hit that like button, thumbs up, people, and subscribe to the channel because over the next few months we're going to be pumping out reactions and info on these new things happening in Star Wars. So subscribe, like this video, and then comment down below what you thought of the Mandalorian trailer and what you're expecting out of this show, and if you're excited. Um, and then, once you do all of those things, there's only one thing left to do, Joseph, and that is, keep those socks salty! Yeah, keep them salty, people! Keep them salty. We love you. See you next Peace. time.